That is the prosecution behind Mr. Diddley, Mr. P. Diddley himself. Hey kids, want a Grammy? I can show you how with something secret the whole industry is doing. It will be real quick and painless, I promise. Well, I can't tell you what celebrity is 100% certifiably a fucking asshole, but I can tell you what celebrity is 100% fucking an asshole. Mr. P. Diddley himself, looking like a deer in headlights as he is sued for supposedly essaying a male producer. And uh, this is an issue I've kept my eye on for a long time as it unfolded from the perspective of particularly females and other female artists in the industry like uh, Cassie. And for those who don't know or care about who Mr. P. Diddley here is or was, a prolific industry hip-hop figure, artist, producer, yada yada. However, I think what's on its way makes it clear that he is yet another industry shill that has been on a pedestal using their persona as a facade to take advantage of select victims. I'm Neo3. I'm a record producer and an engineer who's worked with artists all around the northwest of Ohio. And I've worked with artists and engineers with industry ties to Mr. P. Diddley here. And I'll be the first to say that some artists, as evident, are alienated by the industry for good reasons, as in there's something underlying who they are as human beings and how they conduct themselves, like totally separate from their industry, that others have experienced firsthand, rung the bell about, and then gone ignored times like 12 to 15 individuals or more. This doesn't even factor in who hasn't spoken up yet. These accusations have been coming from notable socialites and real artists involved in the industry alongside P. Diddley, such as Cassie's recent filings and, and now this man, this individual who's a producer. If we looked at an example like R. Kelly, someone who's built a prolific career with their music whilst the greater public failed to implicate the underlying context and the true meanings behind his music that he was and always has been a predator disguised as an artist and a talented one. This type of celebrity status and cult following is what makes these types of predators so effective. It, it makes it hard to isolate who in the crowd who has actually been affected in one-on-one -on -one relationships with the person as opposed to being another person who hasn't firsthand experienced those assaults but continue to propagate the platform that allowed the individual to commit these crimes to begin with. You've got to understand the significance of this development if you are anti-diddly or even pro. Like, this is a bad look. To the people who say they're just speaking up for 15 minutes of fame or spotlight, I want you to consider this question rhetorically. Let's look at it from the shoes of the accuser. Why would I, as a producer and record engineer with dozens of credits under my name, and decades of experience and industry contacts put that all on the line to speak up about my experience to get back at Mr. P. Diddley of all people if I didn't have unwavering proof to back up the accusations. Of course, there was, there was collective skepticism around Cassie's recent allegations as well as the other victims on the, on the lead up to her until the other shoe dropped. But if you're a straight man and you've had another seemingly straight man come on to you and tell you that everyone is doing everybody and that you should too because you're missing out, wouldn't that sit weirder with you than diddly after a night of fun? Well, I've got something to show you. That's this lawsuit. All 73 pages of it that we're going to run through real quick. Parties involved. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Rapper and record... Record. Hello, my name is Record Executive Neo3, rapper and record executive, properly known by his stage names Puff Diddley, Puffy, P Diddley, Diddley, Brother Love, or Love. Right. He rose to prominence in the music entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip hop mogul. This is exactly the issue right here. This is him looking like a man in a middle-aged crisis with a five o'clock shadow. This is his son. He appears in some of the evidence. Former C CEO of the other defendant Motown Records and the parent company of defendant Love Records. Chief of staff to Mr. Diddley. Ethiopia had to marry him. Another chief of staff to Mr. Diddley. Christina Karam. 
Chalice Recording Studios, a defendant Motown Records, Ethiopia Habtamerium, was the chairman and CEO of Universal Music. This is also Universal Music Group, Defendant Love Records, Holmes Enterprises is Mr. Diddley's portfolio of businesses and investments in, you know, like, I don't know, specialty dildos, who fucking knows. Rodney Lil Rod Jones. He comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. This is what I mean when I talk about real artists. It says, Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church. And from 13 to the present day, Mr. Jones has taught himself to play over 13 instruments. He's considered a musical prodigy. So an artist's integrity is something comparable to the personal value difference between like fool's gold and real gold as far as its significance. You know, when, when fool's gold or pyrite, it's known as pyrite, may look like real gold at first glance, but it has little to no value. Real gold, on the other hand, is a precious metal that holds substantial value and material pricelessness. This, god damn. We're good now. This metaphor is often used to differentiate between something that only appears valuable on the surface and something that holds true deep value. And in this case, that refers to, you know, a real artist versus a fake predatory artist. Predators like P. Diddley use their artistry to lower the guard of their victims while they're starstruck. And it is something that I have seen with my own eyes before and hate with a passion because it makes every independent artists look questionable when you know they are someone who lures another individual into being exploited and, and taken advantage of and i want you to note the difference between real art and fake art there's something i need you to understand about these predatory musicians that i've come to realize if the music is the carrot p diddley is the stick and you're the rabbit but instead of eating he just wants to fuck you and put you on a stage for payment Sounds like a good deal, right? Well, predators posing as artists should not really be considered artists when their art is used in aid of said abuse to where they have a cult following behind their music, but a growing pile of detractors and accusers lining up at the courthouse. With how predictable and common these types of cases are becoming, like there have to be ways to identify such patterns of behavior. And there are. At the end of the day, artists have control over the culture. And when we give these predators control over the culture, what kind of culture are we creating? Art, or music, is their Trojan horse. I'm someone who understands the ins and outs of, of how elements of personality and output paint a bigger picture of someone's underlying intent and that no man or woman, musician, or otherwise is an island as far as this goes. This is a man who has grown up living, breathing, and acting through music. Living it. Embodying it. And to a degree, you could argue that Mr. Diddley has too, but they have made their craft for two very different purposes. Here's a picture of him, the child prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in the music industry. Here's some other people he's worked with. About August 2022, he received a call from Mr. Diddley to place him in production. They agreed, life has been detrimentally impacted ever since, in August of 2022. Summary of events. From September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs from Mr. Diddley's album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Diddley for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. All to be there as a place producer to produce records for this guy's album while the following events were going on. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Diddley's residence. Wow. LA, New York, and Miami. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Diddley in the U.S. Virgin Islands, which becomes relevant later. Throughout this time with Mr. Diddley, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Diddley required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, he'd take Mr. Jones' cell phone and begin recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Diddley, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. 
So it says here, Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. Holy shit. <laughs> the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Mr. Diddley providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, and U.S. Virgin Islands and Florida. Oh! 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 Mr. Diddley's chief of staff, Christina Karam, KK, instructed her staff to retrieve drugs so that she can provide it to Mr. Diddley for his consumption. Uh, Mini-me Diddley, Mr. Christian, his son, drugging and, and sexually assaulting a woman. Mr. Diddley detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Young Miami's cousin and or assistant essaying Mr. Jones, the man and producer, the man, the myth, the legend himself, actor Cuba Gooding Jr. S.U.L.E. harassing and essaying uh, Mr. Jones, rapper redacted on Mr. Diddley's yacht, consorting with underage girls, ex-workers, and another R&B singer redacted in Mr. Diddley's L.A. home, consorting with underage girls and ex-workers. This writer spoke with several employees of the yacht rented by Mr. Diddley in the U.S. Virgin Islands who personally witnessed defendant Karam, Haram maybe. Is that ironic that her name is literally Haram? Am I the only one that notices that? Instruct her staff, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Hound, Bound maybe, spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. That's a felony. A complaint is forthcoming. He is a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. So this section here covers a shooting at a music studio where the main takeaway is that Mr. Diddley, the shooting happened somewhere else. This guy took him to the studio's front on word of Mr. Diddley. At this time, Mr. Diddley and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. And then it says, Mr. Diddley gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside of the studio by a drive-by assailant, which was a lie. This is an article about the shooting. He had several corroborating witnesses who spoke with the writer anonymously due to fear of retaliation from Mr. Diddley. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. This is a graphic depiction of the shooting that took place. Here it says, Mr. Jones was essentially harassed and assaulted by Mr. Diddley himself. These events took place in LA, New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. In addition to the unsolicited and unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Diddley to work in Mr. Diddley's bathroom as Mr. Diddley walked around and showered in a clear glass enclosure. As a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Diddley's advances and expressed his discomfort to Mr. Diddley's chief of staff, Christina Haram. KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know, Mr. Diddley will be Mr. Diddley. KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Diddley's groping of Mr. Jones' aims and genitals as friendly horseplay stating that those acts were Mr. Diddley's way of showing that he likes you, Mr. Jones. What is he, a fucking dog? Despite these assurances, on several occasions when Mr. Diddley began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I'm leaving now, and she would Houdini out of there. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best or enabling at worst. <laughs> Mr. Jones believed that KK aided and abetted Mr. Diddley's SAing of him and was working with Mr. Diddley to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship. Through these estually deviant acts, one would say Diddley has a pattern and practice of engaging in such nefarious activity. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Diddley cannot be rehabilitated. Next section, it says, Mr. Diddley attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in sex. Mr. Diddley was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stephen Aaron Jordan, Stevie J. Stevie J is an American DJ record producer and television personality. He was also a part of the Bad Boy Records production team, The Hitman. 
And in 97, Stevie J won a Grammy Award for his work on Mr. P. Diddley's debut album. Throughout the late 90s, Stevie J produced for several artists including Mariah Carey, Tevin Campbell, Notorious Biggie, 112, Jodeci, Faith Evans, Jay-Z, and Eve. Stevie J was one of the producers on the Love album with Mr. Jones. So, it says that Mr. Diddley used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones's admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. Mr. Diddley went as far as to share a video of Stevie J only penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones's anxiety concern. <laughs> I fucking can't with this guy. Wow. It's pretty graphic. Anyways, back to that. This was done to ease Mr. Jones's anxiety concerning homosexuality, and according to Mr. Diddley, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. Are you fucking kidding me? This was done to... Wow. That's crazy, man. That's just nuts. Mr. Diddley, he is here. He is all nuts, no buts. That's wild. <laughs> oh, man. I have a headache after reading this. Informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with the rapper Redacted and R&B singer Redacted and Stevie J. Promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. The following are screenshots of the video of Stevie J penetrating a Caucasian male that Mr. provided. Oh my god, dude. Firstly, let's look up who Stevie J is. Yeah, well. Yeah, this shit, one day ago. This is fresh off the press. Like, Meek Mill's involved in this? Like, this is not good. Thanksgiving of 2022, Mr. Jones is essayed by young Miami's cousin. Simply because she was present in the studio with him, I guess. Mr. Jones was in Mr. Diddley's house located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins were also present. Mr. Diddley was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk to the restroom. While using the restroom, young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believed that Mr. Diddley sent her in there to S.A. Mr. Jones. As she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees. Okay. Mr. Jones pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Um, Mr. Jones rejected. She proceeded to follow him out of the bathroom. She started undressing and attempted to straddle him and have X with him. In the presence of Mr. Diddley and his staff. Once again, Mr. Jones pushed her off. The following are images from a video of young Miami, her cousin, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Diddley himself. Trafficking and Victims Protection Act. Throughout his time with Mr. Diddley, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. During this time, Mr. Jones was forced to solicit ex-workers and perform ex-acts to the pleasure of Mr. Diddley. On or about February 4th, 2023, Mr. Diddley forced Mr. Jones to bring prostitutes and ex-workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. These are supposedly the workers that he forced Mr. Jones to bring back to his home. On or about February 2nd, 2023, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Diddley drugged him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two ex-workers and Mr. Diddley. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Here's a picture of those ex-workers in bed with him the morning after being drugged. On another occasion in Miami, on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Mr. Diddley asked Mr. Jones and DeForest Taylor, it's the A&R for that studio, to enter the studio bathroom. He asked them for a $100 bill because he wanted to do some cocaine with them. Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a $100 bill or even a fucking one, apparently. So Mr. Diddley waited a little later to do coke with young Miami. It says on Thanksgiving night, 
her cousin would have gone on to assault him. Later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit ex-workers from Booby Trap. Mr. Jones did so, and Mr. Diddley forced him to engage in unsolicited ex-acts with these workers. That's the location at, in question. As part of Mr. Jones's ex-worker recruitment tool, Mr. Diddley provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy cap and required him to wear it to Booby Trap on the river as a signal to any ex-worker he approached that Mr. Diddley was in town and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. Mr. Jones had no desire to visit the booby trap. He had no desire to solicit ex-workers from booby trap. Mr. Diddley used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting ex-workers from booby trap. As detailed below, Mr. Diddley used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. These workers were accustomed to servicing Mr. Diddley and would know that he is in town by the sight of the baseball cap he was wearing or that he forced Jones to wear. Following her Instagram profiles of two of the ex-workers that he required Jones to solicit and have ex with at his home. He had no desire to solicit or to have ex with the individuals in the previous paragraph. Mr. Diddley used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with these women. That's a phone number, whatever, it's irrelevant. Mr. Diddley used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. He promised him a Grammy for producer of the year for the Love album, he offered him $250,000 to purchase all the instruments he wanted because he's a producer and a child prodigy, you know. He promised him ownership of his $20 million property, One Star Island, in Miami. He promised access to record label executives like defendants Lucian Charles Grange and Ethiopia Habtamarium. Mr. Diddley would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. This is typical of abusers and domineering parts of abusive relationships. Mr. Diddley threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face and informed Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. What in the ever-loving fuck? Mr. Diddley and Mini-Me Diddley solicits drugs and engages in illicit X acts with minors and X workers. On or about July 2nd, 2023 in California, Mr. Diddley had a listening party at his home. Present at this party was an R&B artist, which is redacted, Mini-Me Diddley, X workers and some underage girls, probably there because of Mini-Me Diddley. Mr. Diddley requested female X workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them, per usual. An hour later, several ex-workers appeared. In addition to the ex-workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. Mr. Diddley forced all the women to drink laced De Leon liquor. Upon information and belief, Mr. Diddley laced the liquor with ecstasy. They laced liquor given to underaged females with MDMA. Mr. Diddley did not check the identification of any of these underage girls, probably because he knew they were underage or just didn't care. The presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very reasonably uncomfortable. He attempted to leave and Mr. Diddley forced him to stay. Mr. Diddley went so far as to take Mr. Jones's car keys to prevent him from leaving. After being forced to drink Lace De Leon shots, Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning naked with an ex-worker sleeping next to him. Screenshots of a video from that night is embedded below here in the uh, legal filings which shows Mr. Diddley with an underage female, another underage female just congregating, an ex-worker, and then Mini-Me Diddley with an underage female as well. Mr. Diddley attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. Now, if you remember, Cuba Gooding Jr. has been in the press of late for similar assault allegations, and now it's, it's proceeded to court, as far as I'm aware. Here it says, Mr. Jones believed that Mr. Diddley was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Mr. Diddley introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Diddley's yacht. During the introduction, Mr. Diddley suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. He then left them alone in a makeshift studio on the yacht. Mr. Diddley and Cuba Gooding Jr. moments before Mr. Jones is salted. As evidenced by a video of which screenshots are embedded below in this legal 
text. Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his rear, and his shoulders. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. He rejected his advances and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. The following is a screenshot of the encounter with Cuba Gooding Jr. That is a f***ing crazy photo. You can't be touching up on the, on the conductor like that. Look at this. Man, if you come into my studio, you best be five foot plus away from me. We practice social distancing up in here for, for reasons like this. Not because of COVID. Cuba Gooding Jr. forcibly touching Mr. Jones on Mr. Diddley's yacht. Yikes! The Love Album. Throughout his time with Mr. Diddley, Mr. Jones was under implied work for hire agreement because he was a producer and he was going to be signing on to produce however many tracks he was going to produce on the album. He was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Diddley or for the songs he produced. What is the reason of him having made the songs for Mr. Diddley in the first place if he wasn't able to get any sort of payment for that? And as a producer and an engineer, how do you make a, an album or, or make a song for someone as prolific as Mr. Diddley is supposed to be and not accept payment for that? That's ridiculous. As evidence, he was listed as a producer for the following songs on the Love Album final release. Deliver Me, Stay Part 1, Reaching, What's Love, Stay A While, Moments, Need Somebody, Homecoming, and Tough Love. So if we look this up, we check the credits. Azan, The Count, Aaron Paris, Monica Paez, Rourke Bailey, Mario Winans, Philip Cornish, and Frederico Vindver. So where the fuck is he at? He's not credited here. This is the new album. There's no deluxe out yet. So what this is, let's look at Deliver Me. Produced by Jay Dilla. He's dead. Diddly. Three more. Stevie J. Lil Rod. And Slimway. Lil Rod is Rodney Jones. I'm pretty sure this is the guy in question here. Lil Rod. There's a credit. Okay, so he is credited. He is credited in some parts of the album, but whether or not he received financial compensation for that, it's separate. It's like you don't, most of the time, you don't get a credit and payment for it, for it unless it's by contract. Which in this case, if he had contracts, then he should have this in the bag as far as he's, he signed on with Diddley to produce his records. He signed his name and presuming that the terms were there, that he'd be receiving compensation for the time and, and months that go into creating multiple records and songs for an overall album. It's like that's upside down. Mr. Diddley and defendants LRMR and UMG all benefited from Mr. Jones' work product, which is true. They failed to compensate Mr. Jones for his work. As a result, Mr. Diddley and defendants LR, MR, and UMG were all unjustly enriched at the expense of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones attempted to work with Mr. Diddley to secure his publishing and royalty rights for the work he completed on the Love album. Mr. Diddley only offered Mr. Jones $29,000 for 13 months, thousands of hours of work, and nine songs that made it to the Love album. Ironically, Mr. Jones was willing to take $50,000 his publishing and royalties. You're telling me you could pay Cassie Ventura $30 million in payouts, but you can't pay your producer $20,000 just, just for kicks, dude? Really? Which is probably his hand in the tracks and publishing rights. Mr. Diddley's self-serving greed would not allow him to pay Mr. Jones an additional $21,000. So he wasn't even paid the full amount of the $50,000 publishing and royalties that would have been earned with the music that he made, but instead Mr. Diddley kept $21,000 of that, those royalty rights? Like, and, and if he's buying One Star Islands, he's got the money to pay that back, rest assured. He's got the, he's got the, the ability and the obligation to pay these back, especially if he's expecting to, to work with uh, record engineers and producers who will make his music for him and he's and he's fucking them out of twenty one thousand dollars like that when it's in contract like 
who does this guy think he is? Mr. Diddley's deceptive business practices became so bad that Mr. Jones was left with no choice other than to make a public plea on social media for Mr. Diddley to pay him for his work. After publicly requesting that Mr. Diddley do the right thing and pay him fairly, Mr. Jones received an onslaught of threatening messages from Stevie J and Love Records A&R DeForest Taylor, who were both, by the way, apparently in bed with Mr. Diddley. This is an example of DeForest Taylor threatening Mr. Jones right here. This baldy head-ass guy, I don't know who he is. Mr. Diddley used his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Mr. Jones. According to Mr. Jones, Mr. Diddley is very forceful and demanding, which seems to be the case. Mr. Diddley does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on Mr. Jones. Mr. Diddley does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on Mr. Jones if Mr. Jones does not comply with his demands. This is corroborated elsewhere in these filings. As detailed above, Mr. Diddley threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face, which is what I was referring to. As the A&R of Love Records, DeForest Taylor did not require Mr. Jones or any other creatives, musicians, or artists to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement. On another occasion, while standing in Mr. Diddley's bedroom, Mr. Jones was forced to watch as Mr. Diddley displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. Mr. Diddley shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine, which was a 1999 according to this article. He shared that the artist and Mr. Diddley's girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, aka J-Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. If that's true, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, they were both arrested. 1999. The shooting at Chalice Record Studios confirmed Mr. Diddley's statements. These statements reinforced Mr. Jones' fear of Mr. Diddley and strengthened Mr. Diddley's dominion and control of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones was terrified of Mr. Diddley. He felt like he could not tell him no. Mr. Diddley consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Mr. Diddley made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. This guy. Mr. Diddley instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Upon information and belief, Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the re recording studio. This is just fucking nuts. The LAPD was in CRS, the studio, and witnessed the blood in the restroom, and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections with law enforcement. So at this point, this transcends music and the industry of, mu of music as a whole. Mr. Jones had no reason to disbelieve Mr. Diddley, as he had seen firsthand through the shooting of G and the subsequent silence of the LAPD and the media that Mr. Diddley indeed had the power to harm him. The LAPD spent hours in CRS after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the restroom pictured above, yet no arrests were made. The morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at CRS and G's blood was still on the floor of the restroom, and Mr. hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. The morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at CRS and G's blood was still on the floor of the restroom and Mr. Diddley hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. Basically, this last section talks about how uh, Ethiopia, Habtamarium, Lucian Charles Grange, Motown Records, Love Records, and UMG aided, abetted, and profited off of Mr. Diddley's uh, RICO Enterprise, which is the Racketeering and Corrupt Organizations uh, Act. So this just talks about the different um, alcohol sponsorships. I mean, this just goes on and on and on and on and on. Holy shit. Defendant Christina Haram is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Mr. Diddley's Jeffrey Epstein. That's fucking, that's a crazy, that's a crazy comparison. But like, this guy has been operating under the nose of the music industry for as long as he has been. This cannot set precedent for, for how musicians and independent producers are viewed when 
you know, we're the little guys. We're not in positions of power. We're, we're in positions where we want to make things come true. We want to lay the foundation for the craft and vision of the artist to make true. But what happened here was it started out that way. It started out as the producer wanted to help Mr. Diddley's, you know, prolific career extend based on contract as a paid producer. And what happened is, is Diddley took advantage of him and, and he committed crimes. This talks about how Haram had his drug of choice ready when he asked for it. She ordered and distributed various drugs in his different homes on Multiple occasions, Haram forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Diddley's drug pouch against his will. Haram had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the RICO enterprise. Stevie J would recruit ex-workers and attend and participate in freak-offs, whatever the fuck that means. Mini-me, Mr. Diddley, solicits prostitutes, underage girls, and ex-workers would engage in freak-offs. I mean, the apple doesn't fall far, I suppose. This gives me a headache, man. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of violence, threatening to eat the plaintiff's face, displaying and distributing guns in plaintiff's presence, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, and bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting with Shine. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry. So what they did was they'd, they'd use the excuse of, okay, because we have so many connections and we can basically fuck up your world as a musician, you need to do what we tell you to in order for us not to do that. So it's extortion and intimidation. Their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, parading powerful music industry executives such as defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium and his parties. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of non-payment for work completed, fake promises of cash payments, $250,000, producer of the year Grammy awards, and guaranteed access to future projects and a $20 million home on Star Island in Miami. It says plaintiff has intentionally left the names and images of these individuals out of the pleading out of fear of retaliation. This header says, holy shit. While living and traveling with Mr. Diddley, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Diddley has cameras in every room of his home. So this passage here says, Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Diddley has recordings of, of these defendants and therefore blackmail, presumptively. Upon information and belief, these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent. And as is the case with homosexual sex tape of Stevie J that Mr. Diddley provided to Mr. Jones, Mr. Diddley possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties, which is what I just said. He's got blackmail. Upon information and belief, due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Diddley believes that he is above the law and is untouchable. Okay, IT director has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Diddley who confirmed that his IT guy is the gatekeeper to all of his recordings upon information belief what and from social media and the internet due to all of the incriminating acts he was required to record for mr diddley so he's just gone into obscurity and exile because of the amount of footage that mr diddley has the amount of blackmail that that one person has alone he has had to literally just go into his own world like that that's sad that's sad as hell First cause of action, conduct and participate in a RICO enterprise. Okay, so this is basically prosecuting him for RICO violations to enrich themselves financially and actually at the expense of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists by maximizing defendants' revenues through fraudulent means. As set forth herein, defendants benefited financially from their scheme to defraud plaintiff, including by making false representations that claim that loyalty and obedience to Mr. Diddley will result in cash payments, 2,500, no, 25,000, what the f am I saying? $250,000, Grammy awards, access to future projects, access to famous celebrities, access to famous athletes, a $20 million home on Star Island in Miami, 
promises that plaintiff can increase his chances of securing cash payments at $250,000, Grammy Awards, access to future projects, access to famous celebrities, access to famous athletes, a $20 million home on Star Island in Miami by soliciting ex-workers, by soliciting prostitutes, by engaging in homosexual acts, by distributing and transporting firearms, by distributing and transporting drugs, by involuntarily sleeping with ex-workers in the presence of Mr. Diddley, and by utilizing their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, which defendants would not have done but for the existence of the scheme. That is the prosecution behind Mr. Diddley, Mr. P. Diddley himself, to hopefully take down this, this uh, RICO racket. Because this ain't this is not how musicians work. This is not this is not what the the actual music industry is about. The false impression that because Mr. P. Diddley makes music and has all these awards and accolades and, and social connections that he's a good dude or by any means a worthy industry figure of looking up to or working with is just farcical. Here's something else. Uh, regarding Cassie, the RICO enterprise throughout the years, including Mr. Diddley's 10-year relationship with his girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. According to Ms. Ventura's civil complaint, this RICO enterprise continued in her relationship when Mr. Diddley forced her to carry his gun in her purse, forced her to engage in unwanted sexual acts with male prostitutes and sex workers, which is fucking wild, forcing her to consume dangerous amounts of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol, and paying a member of his security team $5,000 to blow up the vehicle of Kid Cudi because he was jealous and insecure of their relationship. The RICO enterprise continued from September 2022 to the present day, as evidenced by the hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings in plaintiff's possession, Defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie-Me Diddley, Christina Haram, his assistants and staff all orchestrated, participated, managed, and executed the RICO enterprise by purchasing and distributing all these drugs, by purchase and distributing firearms, by requiring the solicitation of actual encounters with prostitutes, ex-workers, and minors, and by forcing artists, creative musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labors to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. The RICO enterprise has functioned as a continuing unit and maintains an ascertainable structure separate and distinct from the pattern of racketeering activity. What they're trying to say is the music and the criminal activity are different, but related. The enterprise was characterized by the defendant's pattern of false representations and omissions made by defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, other current and former members of the defendant's associates and staff to defendant's artists, creatives, musicians, and producers. These false representations and omissions were designed to induce defendants' artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as a solicitation of actual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. Okay, this talks about how they required their producers and whatnot to wear hats. His, his producers wore more hats than just the colloquial producer hat. You know, you had to wear a hat to go and, and solicit his little, you know, when the true nature of defendant's scheme was left undeclosed, was omitted, and or was affirmatively misrepresented, all to fraudulently increase defendant's profits, at least some of which were used to expand the enterprise, causing further injury to plaintiff Jones and other unwitting artists, creative musicians, and producers. This is the core of the problem for my industry, for the industry that I'm in, as far as using your platform, your artistry, and, you know, the excuse of placing you as a producer or a vocalist or whatnot, and then proceeding to exploit sexually and financially and on a resource level the very people that they seek out. It's just, it's criminal. And it's not normal. That's my point, is that it's not normal or acceptable, nor should it be precedent that is allowed to, to prosper in the sense that I'm a producer and, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a thinker and a spearhead and a, a fucking 
creative powerhouse when it comes to making music for other people, but it's like, I just can't, I can't imagine the thought of taking advantage of the people that I make art with in, in the way that this Mr. Diddler has. The other fact of the matter is that when numerous people speak up about the same thing, fucking listen to them. Because I remember when, when Cassie came out with these, with her allegations on this, this topic that I was skeptical, but reviewed all the pieces of evidence as well as the additional accusations and just not even taking into account the past but what has come to light of late and the fact that they they ripped them off and then and then took the funding and operating to put it back into their own company to continue ripping people off and 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 screwing over uh more musicians and producers and whatnot the defendant's scheme was reasonably calculated to deceive plaintiff jones artists creatives musicians producers of the ordinary prudence and comprehension through the execution of their complex and illegal scheme to misrepresent the effectiveness of soliciting prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and distributing drugs and guns that did not, that did not, would not, and could not lead to securing Grammy Awards, purchasing $20 million homes, participating on future projects, $250,000 cash payments, and meeting influential music industry executives, such as defendants Lucian Charles Grange. Plaintiff Jones would not have lived with Mr. Diddley for 13 months, missing birthdays, holidays, and family events, but for the illegal racketeering scheme operated by defendants. Defendants each had the specific intent to participate in the overall RICO enterprise and the scheme to defraud Plaintiff Jones, and each participated in the enterprise as follows. These are their names, defendants Lucian, Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Mr. Diddley Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group control and participate in the activities of the enterprise in the variety of ways as set forth herein, including but not limited to developing and marketing scores of writing camps, listening parties, services that are marketed to innocent, unassuming artists, creatives, musicians, and producers who are vulnerable and in seeking of opportunities to work and share their craft, which is natural for a real artist to want to do. But the thing is that predators like this and Mr. Diddley, Mr. P. Diddley, they take advantage of these unwitting new artists who are budding in the industry and looking to get their first placements. You don't have to be a female artist to be taken advantage of and exploited in the way that Mr. Jones here was. And I think the, the more the more men that come out with their stories of being taken advantage of like this and, and assaulted, it'll be better for setting precedent when it comes to females who are able to bring their stories and experiences forward in whatever type of assault or, or issues they would have had with a person. Because again, facts don't give a fuck. They will find their way one way or another. And this is a very prime example of that. In connection with defendants acting from New York, the defendants used the mail and interstate wires to solicit Plaintiff Jones and artist creative musicians and producers and to use Plaintiff Jones and the artist creative musicians and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. Each of these acts was undertaken with the knowledge and approval of all other defendants in furtherance of the goals of their conspiracy. Classic RICO. So all the record executives direct control and participate in the activities of the enterprise in a variety of ways as set forth herein, including as the employer, parent company sponsor, and respondent superior of defendants, Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and other current and former members of the defendant's associates and staff. Throughout the relevant period, defendants, wherever, whoever, oversaw the marketing and soliciting of potential artists, creatives, musicians, and producers from their headquarters in New York, California, and Florida to consumers in New York, California, and Florida, and around the country, relying on the mail, email, social media, text messages, and WhatsApp messages to distribute interstate wires to disseminate the misleading information described herein, as well as to receive profits from the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers from their forced solicitation of sex workers, and the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. Each of these acts was undertaken with the knowledge and approval of all other defendants in furtherance of the goals of their conspiracy. The accountant, would ensure the wiring funds transfer or cash payment to sex workers, Frankie Santella, Moy Bone, Brendan Paul, 
and KK would also be responsible for ensuring payment to sex workers and cash. Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne, Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Diddley's sex workers and receive payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, the accountant, which outlined defendants' ongoing criminal operation. During the 10 years preceding the filing of this action and to the present, all defendants did cooperate jointly and severally in the commission of three or more of the predicate acts that are itemized with citation and violation of citation as described in the complaint. Beginning at an exact date unknown to plaintiff, but within 10 years preceding the filing of this action, defendants have knowingly, willingly, and unlawfully participated in a pattern of racketeering activity that continues to this day. The act set below racketeering acts had the same pattern and purpose to defraud plaintiff for the benefit of defendants. Each RICO act involved the same or similar methods of commission and participants. So basically without the accountant, they were screwed is what it's saying. They were getting screwed anyways, but whatever. The separate racketeering acts all relate to each other in the way that they were part of a concerted actions by defendants to use the endorsement and channels of the enterprise to operate their businesses to fraudulently induce plaintiff Jones and the artist creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as the solicitation of and sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. This just says that the RICO charge is interconnected and all related. So in other words, what this is also saying is that the record executives that were heading the labels and producers working with uh, Mr. Diddley were knowingly complicit in what was going on to the degree of they were probably, they themselves, also threatened by Mr. Diddley and intimidated to stay quiet like a common RICO racket. Multiple acts of mail fraud, multiple acts of wire fraud, second cause of action. This is the assault and harassment. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and re-alleges them as a set forth fully herein. As described above, Mr. Dudley frightened and placed plaintiff in apprehension of harm when he physically and sexually assaulted him from October 2022 to October 2023 in his home and wherever. Mr. Dudley forcibly touched and attempted to and or threatened to touch plaintiffs threatened to intimate areas and or touch plaintiff with his own intimate body parts mr diddley violently gripped and palmed mr jones's anus and crotch without consent he forced mr jones to work in mr diddley's bathroom and watch mr diddley as he showered mr diddley forced mr jones to work in the studio while mr diddley stripped naked to get his body massaged Mr. Diddley forced Mr. Jones to work while Mr. Diddley walked around naked. As a result of Mr. Diddley's conduct, plaintiff has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages, for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. The conduct of Mr. Diddley described was willful, wanton, and malicious. At all relevant times, Mr. Diddley acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that his conduct was certain to cause injury and or humiliation to plaintiff and intended to cause fear, physical injury, and or pain and suffering to plaintiff. By virtue of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Infli California's bystander negligent infliction of emotional distress against brings his claim against them for the shooting of G. The elements of bystander need are closely related to the injury victim, present at the scene of injury producing event at the time it occurs, and is aware that it is causing injury to the victim, as a result of knowing that, suffers serious emotional distress, a reaction beyond that which would be anticipated in a disinterested witness, and which is not abnormal response to the circumstances. And then there's citation. As detailed above, Mr. Jones was two feet away from G as either Mr. Diddley or Mr. Diddley Mini shot him multiple times in the restroom of CRS. As detailed above, Mr. Jones was the only individual that aided G as he laid on the bathroom floor in a fetal position, bleeding out. As detailed above, Mr. Diddley and Mr. Mini Me Diddley orchestrated a cover-up and through Fahim Muhammad lied to the LAPD and forced Mr. Jones and all other attendees to lie to the police. 
as well. Mr. Diddley and Mini Me Diddley knew that they had shot G in the restroom and that and that G was shot as he was leaving the studio. Mr. Diddley and Mini Me Diddley intentional deception caused a delay and G receiving immediate medical care as the ambulance parked three blocks away from CRS out of fear that there was an active shooting when there wasn't. Mr. Jones had to run down the block and convince them that the shooting had ended. Like, 911? Hello? These events traumatized Mr. Jones. It caused Mr. Jones to suffer from insomnia, PTSD, severe anxiety, and depression. Additionally, the fear and silence from the remaining witnesses aided in the reinforcement of Mr. Diff's statements. Additionally, the fear and silence from the remaining witnesses aided in the reinforcement of Mr. Diddley's statements that he is untouchable. As a result of Mr. Diddley and Minnie Me Diddley's conduct, Plaintiff Jones has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. The conduct of Mr. Diddley and Minnie Me Diddley described above was willful, wanton, and malicious. Okay, this is the same. This is the fourth cause of action for assault against young Miami's cousin who molested him in a bathroom. Mr. Jones incorporated by reference all preceding pair. Okay. Jane Doe 1 frightened and placed plaintiff in apprehension of harm when she physically and sexually assaulted him on Thanksgiving Day 2022 and Mr. was laughed home in Miami, Florida. Jane Doe 1 forcibly touched and attempted to threaten, used her mouth and performed the deed on plaintiff while he was urinating in the restroom. How do you achieve that acrobat position? Plaintiff fought her off while Mr. Diddley and his associates sat outside loudly laughing. Jane Doe 1 then followed Mr. Jones outside of the restroom and began undressing in front of Mr. Diddley and his associates straddled Mr. Jones and attempted to have a forced intercourse with him. As a result of Jane Doe's conduct, plaintiff has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional, emotional, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to Da, 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 da. Conduct of Jane Doe 1 was willful, wanton, and malicious, and plaintiff is entitled to recover penal, punitive damages. Fifth cause of action, the liability for the assault committed by Jane Doe 1 incorporates, so this asserts that Mr. Jones was assaulted by Jane Doe 1, um, that Mr. Diddley was present while he was being assaulted. Mr. Jones was legally on the premise as a guest and an invitee of Mr. Diddley. Jane Doe 1 was legally on the premises as a guest too. Mr. Diddley owned the premises and had dominion and control over the premises where Mr. Jones was harmed. Mr. Diddley had dominion and control over the actions of Jane Doe 1 and failed to step in and stop Jane Doe from assaulting Mr. Jones, which he did not. As the owner of the property, Mr. Diddley had a duty to protect Mr. Jones from the harm he suffered at the hands of Jane Doe 1. Mr. Diddley breached his duty when he failed to stop Jane Doe 1 from assaulting Mr. Jones. In furtherance of this breach, Mr. Diddley was laughing and encouraging Jane Doe 1 to continue her assault of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones has suffered immensely because of Mr. Diddley's intentional breach of his duty to him. So not only did he betray his uh, signed producer, he sicked the uh, neighborhood milkmaid on him apparently. Mr. Jones has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and da 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 da. Sixth cause of action, premises liability for the sexual assault committed by Cuba Gooding Jr. against Mr. Diddley himself. Many me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global. Here, Mr. Jones was sexually assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr. on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands in January 2023. Mr. Combs was present while Mr. Jones was being assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Jones was legally on the premises. Cuba Gooding Jr. was legally on the premises. Mr. Diddley owned the premises, had dominion over the premises where Mr. Jones was harmed. Mr. Diddley had dominion and control over the actions of Cuba Gooding Jr. and failed to step in and stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones, as he should have. But again, in, 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 in the world of, of people like this, that's off the table. It never even was on it. As a result of Mr. Diddley's breach of his duty, Mr. Jones has suffered and continued to suffer harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. Conduct is willful, wanton, and malicious of... of 
Mr. Dudley, plaintiff is entitled. Seventh cause. This is, we're, we're barely even, barely even halfway through this. So it's defendants, defendants, the force, threats of force, fraud, abuse of process, and coercion. Despite such knowledge, these defendants intentionally paid for, facilitated, perpetrated, and participated in Mr. Dudley's violation. Defendants, Mr. Dudley, Minnie Me Dudley, Christina Haram, and Dudley Global knowingly and intentionally participated in perpetrated, assisted, supported, facilitated a sex trafficking trafficking venture that was that was in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce together and with others uh, in violation of citation. Among other things, defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global knowingly and intentionally recruited, enticed, provided, obtained, advertised, and solicited by various means Mr. Jones as well as other class members, knowing that defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global would use means of force, threats of force, fraud, coercion, and a combination of such means to cause Mr. Jones as well as others, some of whom were under the age of 17, to engage in commercial sex acts. Defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global and its employees had actual knowledge that they were perpetrating and facilitating Mr. Diddley's sexual abuse and trafficking, conspiracy to recruit, salute, blue sex traffic, I can't fucking speak, that they were perpetuating and facilitating Mr. Diddley's sexual abuse caused coercive and sex trafficking conspiracy to recruit, solicit, entice, coerce, harbor, transport, obtain, and provide Mr. Jones as well as others whom were under the age of 17 into commercial acts through the means of force, threats of force, fraud, abuse of process, and coercion. Despite such knowledge, these defendants intentionally paid for, facilitated, perpetrated, and participated in Mr. Diddley's violations of citation, which defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global knew and were in reckless disregard of the fact that Mr. Diddley would coerce, defraud, and force Mr. Jones to engage in commercial sex acts. It says, we're in affecting interstate and foreign commerce, including its music distributing and publishing activities, which were in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce. By taking the concrete steps alleged in this complaint, defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global knowingly participated in sex trafficking and furthering the Diddley's sex trafficking venture. The concrete steps constituted taking part in the sex trafficking venture and were necessary for its success. I've been I've been reading this for an hour and 45 minutes. I don't want to say this fucking guy's name. I'm not going to say this guy's name. I hope you know that. The concrete steps constituted active engagement by defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global in Mr. Diddley's sex trafficking adventure. Defendants Mr. Diddley, Minnie Me Diddley, Christina Haram, and Diddley Global knew that its active engagement would lead to and cause coercive commercial sex traffic. And this just goes on and on and on and on. Inadequate or negligent security. Plaintiff pray for judgment against defendants and each of them as follows. General damages, actual medical expenses incurred, future medical expenses for loss of earning, for interest according to law, for costs of suit incurred herein, and for such other and further relief as the courts may deem just and proper. Ninth cause of action, aiding, abetting, and inducing a sex trafficking venture in violation of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act against defendants Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamerium, Motown Records, Love Records, Universal Music Group. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference da, 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 da. Okay, the defendants aided, abetted, and induced Mr. Diddley's sex trafficking venture that was in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce together and with others in violation of citation. Crimes da, 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 that they all committed aided and abetted in Mr. Diddley's per perpetrating of coercive trafficking in violation of citation and Mr. Diddley's co-conspirators knowingly benefited from coercive sex trafficking in violation of U 18 USC. These crimes were in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce. This is gonna make my fucking head explode. I've been, I've been reading this for an hour and 45 minutes because it just goes on and on and on and on and on. I'm sure that there are plenty of people that could have foreseen this amazing fall from grace if there was ever even a standing to begin with, but it's like this, this shit, the warning signs were here is my point. There are things present in, in good real musicians that will not be present in fake charlatan musicians like Mr. P. Diddley and his enterprises. Because at the end of the day, even though they might make music and, and publish it and release it and do shows and whatnot, all of that is a facade to get through to other 
trafficking victims or victims that they could potentially turn into, you know, their little droids. Some people really like to thrive on, on the ruins of others and, and just love that. It's just fucking sad. I make music on my own time because I love to and enjoy it and I love making other people satisfied with their craft and the music that they want to hear internally more than just uh, Mr. Diddley. The thing worth highlighting is the fact that every artist at the end of the day ties their art back to their personality or elements of themselves and that's the thing that is I'm just worried that this is indicative of a larger problem that you know, until these things are put into court paperwork like this, remain under the surface. And, you know, when, when I can work with people who have worked with this particular individual, Mr. P. Diddley, you know, engineers who have been hired by him or, or by his labels or representatives to do a record by them and then they get screwed because there's this image of this infallible deity that they, they present themselves as, you get issues like this where you, you have a... A, a massive lawsuit that hits the ground with a thud that names numerous pivotal figures in the industry that are all there for their own corrupt reasons. And again, it's like a lot of these people are maintaining the positions that they did, particularly because of Mr. Diddley's corruption and predatory natures. Negligent infliction of emotional distress. That's what NIAID is. It's an acronym. Um, so he's suing young Miami's cousin for emotional distress plaintiff. Knew that such conduct was likely to result in emotional distress. Emotional distress was foreseeable by them. So this lawsuit names more than just uh, Mr. Diddley himself. It names his associates and cohort and makes specific allegations and provides at face value pretty solid evidence to back that up given the rest of the entire filing and that the charges just keep stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking there's 15 destruction of the enforcement of the trafficking victim protection act against same defendants here's a former diddly worker Universal Music Group was aware that there were public allegations that Mr. Diddley's illegal conduct was facilitated by several named co-conspirators. They were made aware of this through complaints made made by Cassie Ventura and the lawsuit by former worker Jonathan Adi. The defendants concealed from state and federal government its numerous cash payments to those co-conspirators so that he could make those cash payments to his co-conspirators with knowledge that such transactions did not produce a clear paper trail. Defendants obstructed, attempted to obstruct, and in many ways interfered with and prevented the enforcement of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act by investigators and prosecuting agencies. So the defendant's relationship with Mr. Diddley and providing to his venture with vast sums of cash each year went far beyond a normal and lawful sponsorship, partnership, and employer-employee relationships. The defendants knew that their decision to go beyond a normal music relationship with Mr. Diddley obstructed the ability of law enforcement and prosecuting agencies to enforce the Trafficking Victim Protection Act. This is not a good dude. This is not a good group of people whatever hits the fan and splashes on them more power to it because this is just disgusting but this this was dated february 26 which as of today was three days ago yeah this won't be the the last development in this i can assure you that i i had reason to want to speak up about this because i actually have contacts who have worked on a contract producer basis as producers uh for and, and since moved on from working as producers with UMG and Mr. P. Diddley himself, not understanding what they were getting into, probably for the aforementioned reasons, uh, after having first-person experience of, of why people stop working with him, and it's just gotten to a point where now that this, now that this suit has come out, I think a lot more is going to come to light, and that's what is supposed to happen. Because at the end of the day, that like this is this is a, a Rico racket, like many. That's the thing about Rico is that it has a unique spread over particular actions and behaviors and structures behind behaviors and actions taken to perpetrate a particular Rico racket. Many of which are present here when you establish contacts, when you establish connections within the industry to really sink your your fangs into obtaining power, or as this calls it, dominion, which is is 
Yeah. It's it like all these are, are power moves to maintain dominion over victims, which are, are producers like me and, and producers like Mr. Jones, who filed this lawsuit probably because he just wasn't being listened to. No one was paying attention to him or because again, it's like without this lawsuit, I wouldn't have been made aware of it. But this 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 lawsuit also implicates people like Cuba Gooding Jr. who have also had issues themselves. Yeah, this is just it's sad. It's sad because it, it what it does is it perverts what actual musicians and actual producers are there to do. Obviously, you don't hire producers so they can run around and, and find your little sex slaves and do your bidding for you. That's not no. In his world, his world only, sure, and, and other people like him, but it's like when it comes to being a real producer who makes beats for money and shit, it's like, this is just unacceptable. It's unacceptable and we need to be aware as musicians and even just basic marketing and sales, we need to be aware of the warning signs of, of what these types of people are and how they operate because you never know who you're going to get. Anyways, this is just my opinion on the matter. I'm just me. But uh, again, I have over 10 years of experience producing music and I've worked with numerous artists and had placements. So ultimately, I just wanted to give my opinion on the matter because this concerns a uh, pretty prolific or at least thus far prolific figure in the music industry that has control over small time producers that are just trying to make it, you know, make their way and do what they do best, which is making music. And, uh, you know, that is the wasted time and effort just to appease this one man's ego and virility is incredible and i'm i'm very very encouraged and happy that mr jones was able to come out and share his experience and story as far as his dealings with mr diddley and anyone else who has experienced shit with him or anyone else in the industry needs to speak up about it if something actually happened and something real occurred you best believe it's going to occur to someone else that is not you someone else that you know might be similar to you or are doing the same things that you're doing that find themselves in a similar position that with just a couple extra steps and, and kind of throwing the flag out on the issue that can be given to the right authorities and taken care of the way it needs to be taken care of because when it goes unreported and untalked about it's like it just simmers under the surface anyways i'm no legal scholar i'm no guy i'm just you know i'm nothing special when i see shit like this that says oh Hey, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even even Stevie J is doing it. And twisting things for their convenience in the way that he did here and in the way that you rest assured plenty of other people do, are doing as well. You just gotta trust your bullshit meter. When multiple people are saying the same thing about a person that is a glaring red flag i would i just shiver at that at that thought more artists and producers and people like myself who are just trying to make music and make art being exploited and tricked out by people like p diddley who who have these record deals and these big ass companies and representatives behind them and you know you little capos on the street that can go and do their bidding for them and you know it's just like at, at what point does it leave the world of music that's what my video is concerning is how this pertains to the world of music when you have a prolific figure like this that can pervert their hand in the industry and their connections to producers and record executives in order to to continue perpetuating their their abuse and their exploits it's like more people need to have backbones to stand up to this type of shit regardless of the consequences and you just got to keep an open eye and no matter who doesn't pay attention or listen to allegations or, or things that have happened, whether it's fact or, or just allegations, you've just got to remain unwilling in the fact that those facts will matter. They will matter. Facts are unwavering and the facts will matter. So that is what I'm looking forward to in this case. My name is Neo3. I'm a producer. I make music. If you want to hear more of my music, it's on this channel. Uh, keep an eye out because there's plenty more to come in the future. But I just wanted to share my opinion on this matter because not all musicians are as disgusting as this one person and his cadre. Like, they exist, yes. But it's like when they're, they're caught on this level and with that much chocolate on their hands... Like, they've been in the cookie jar. He's he's going to have a difficult time here in the next couple of months, both both Mr. Jones and uh, Mr. Diddley himself. But I hope that this is a moment of clarity and reassurance for Mr. Jones in the fact that he is not alone. And, you know, you've got, you've got the rest of the actual real music industry behind you to back you up. 
and to tell tell the world that this is not normal. Using your musicianship and your artistry to con people into exploiting them. That's that's what a predator does. That's not what a musician does. Musicians are not are not like that. So even though that P. Diddley might be a musician or was a musician or has discography, you know, art is made to be holistic. Art is made as a mode of communication. Art is made to connect with one human to another. It, it is not meant to be used as a tool to con people into sleeping with you or, or getting to a place where you can exploit them. And that seems to be what P. Diddley has always done. I really hope they throw the book at him and anyone else like him. So yeah, that's what I've got to say on the matter. It's just fucking nuts, man. What I'm gonna do is include the rest of this legal filing in the description so you can read it for yourself because this is just too much for my brain to, this is gonna make my fucking head explode. And um, yeah, uh, pay diddly, go to hell. On behalf of real musicians and producers and uh, Mr. Jones here who has very bravely and courageously spoken up about what happened to him. And I have major respect for that. All right, this has been two hours. Neo 3 out.